Okay, let us start. I think around 20 people have already joined. So, so as per the agenda, so the first uh, I will give you some introduction about the our project. Uh, most of you are already we have done bilateral meeting with you, your country focal points and all the thematic focal points that you have mentioned in the CBIT GSP project. So CBIT GSP project is a kind of a, your a project that was sponsored by the JEP. So we are also working with JEP and if you are aware that in the COP decision that was decided that uh, there is a separate platform that need to be developed for this specifically for the developing country. So developing country can request for kind of support to move towards the ETF enhanced transparency framework because the requirement of the reporting and the other uh, reporting requirement related to the transparencies are increasing in the Paris Agreement compared to the convention. So we also I want this opportunity. I want also want to tell you that in the June session uh, in the next month, we are launching the platform CBIT GSP platform as per what decided in the COP. So as of now we are all the countries are requesting through emails or maybe some phone calls or messages for any kind of support. But from the next month now you can request through a CBIT GSP platform for any kind of support activity that you are needed for your country or maybe a, any kind of a, a different requirement, whatever in in terms of the reportings or in terms of transparency. So we created a country pages for the each country on the CBIT GSP platform where we mention about the national CBIT project, DTR project and all the other transparency initiative taken by the country with other orga international organization. So you are aware that the PADPA, FAO and UNEP and UNDP all are working for the ETF implementation in the Asia, Pacific and all other region. So around 150 countries, developing countries will able to access this platform. They can put their request on the platform. They can track the request that what they have posted on the platform. Are, are there anyone assigned? to their request so they can contact that particular person and they can request for the. And they can track the request whatever they have put in the platform. Uh, in the next month we will try to give you a demo of the platform, how you can use that platform and how your country focal point CBIT focal point and the BTR and <coughs> other project focal point national communications and BT, B, BUR, BTR can access and they can also edit the uh, content that we have put on the platform. So I think now more people have joined. Let me start uh, our actually global coordinator Fatima Zara is not available due to his she is traveling to South Africa for the transparency workshop. So I will start the. Uh, I think more people join. Maybe I can take a group photo. So maybe I request all of you to just start your camera maybe for two minutes so I can take two or three good pictures of all of you. Let me stop sharing. Yes. Yes, thank you for opening the camera. I request to everyone, let me wait for one minute. If you are facing some problem in turning on the camera. OK, let me take the first picture. Just wait for one more minute.
Yes, transparency is moving towards, I think more female I can see. Okay, thank you. Thank you everyone for the, your nice space. Uh, we will soon meet you. I think in the September we are planning for the Asia Regional Workshop in the South Korea. We will invite you everyone. So where we can meet. So now I will move forward to the Mentimeter exercise. So I will. I will give you the screen so you can scan and. So if you can see or you can scan the code, you just have to open your mobile and scan this barcode or if you are not able to scan, then just. Uh, enter this website, I will also put it in the. Chat box so you can just click. Those who are not able to access the barcode, just click the chat box link. You are directly go to the Mentimeter. Yeah, I am receiving the response, so let me share the Mentimeter screen. Yeah, so for the first question, where are you joining us from today? So already there are 13 answers. OK, India, Brunei, Mongolia, Afghanistan. Cambodia, Fiji, Indonesia. Uh, I request uh, Ravneet, are you able to see my screen? Just want to confirm. Yes, yes, we can see your screen. OK. okay. Yes, so all the neighbors country are together here. You can see the 18 answers. So let's move to the next question. So the next question is the what is the first thing that comes to your mind when you hear an ETF enhanced transparency framework? So you are hearing this word transparency so many times in the recent two, three years. So maybe uh, what is the exact word? That you are. Yes, there is agreement reporting BTR. Yes, BTR is the. Maybe a common word for all of one. Yes, Article 13 under the Paris Agreement, which tells what is the transparency. Yes, MRV. Now we move towards from MRV to BTR. Yes, expecting this CRT common reporting table, which may be a challenge for everyone. Yes, greenhouse gas inventory, the accountability, yes. OK, so. Now I am closing this and I will start it again after the webinar of my and Diane. So for the feedback that. What is your thinking about the end? What do you want to learn or is there anything? So at the end I will start again the Mentimeter exercise. Let me stop here. OK. So I will start my presentation first. So my presentation is talking about the how we are transitioning from the MRV towards the ETF. Let me share my screen.
okay so i want to tell you not go in detail about uh, what is the exact changes that we are doing in the terms of mrv to etf but i will give you the overview in the 10 minutes that what is what the changes in the reporting and the uh, all the other thing that you are doing in terms of submission to the unf triple c so my first slide about the transparency arrangement. What are the objective of the transparency in the MRV and the ETF? So I will tell you first that what is the MRV? Those who are not aware, MRV is the requirement under the kind of a transparency requirement under the convention that was signed around 1990s or 2000. But after 2015, when Paris Agreement was signed, so the reporting requirement and all the MRV arrangement will be replaced by the ETF. So now we are moving towards the ETF transition. So transparency is already there in the MRV. Now it is improved version in the ETF. So I will tell you about the what is the objective and the benefits. So there are no major changes in the transparency arrangement. So if you can see that the all the objective is that the first one is to communicate and information relevant to the implementation, including the emission and removal and action and support. So everyone is already reporting the greenhouse gas emission and removal in the MRV arrangement. Yes, Ramnit, you want to? Is there anything? I am not. Yeah, I think someone just typed that they cannot hear. On the chat. OK. Are you able to hear my voice? Ramnit? Yes, I am able to hear clearly. OK. Maybe if the participants, if you're not able to hear, you can just uh, try to rejoin. Yeah, Tahiri, maybe you can uh, rejoin again. Yes, Kim, uh, we will share the presentation and everything after the webinar on our platform. OK, I will continue to my presentation. So what I am talking about that these are the objective are common in the ETF and the MRV. You are already reporting a greenhouse gas emission removal in the national communications and BUR before the BTR. But now you have to report some more information. It's like you are now reporting your name and age in the uh, one form. But now you have to inform what is the exact birth date, month, and year, and what is your height, what is your weight. So this is the kind of change from the MRV to ETF. So another change is to provide the accurate and reliable data information. So some countries are facing challenges to how to provide accurate because they are not able to estimate that data, or maybe they are not able to conduct this type of exercise. So this is a kind of challenge, but this is the one of the requirement and once you uh, fulfill this requirement, you are able to get so many benefits in terms of transparency, in terms of supports, in terms of your reporting requirement that you are improving over the year by year. So yes, this is another uh, benefits is you can get the trust and confidence among the parties. So each country can and the developed country most importantly that developed country can see what is your support needed and receive that for particular year or over the 10 years or five years so they can if some countries want to provide a support for particular greenhouse gas inventory or ndc tracking or in the adaptations or mitigation they can see your bu or btrs and national communication and they can support you for particular so it is a must necessary that you provide that what is your support requirements what is your need and what you have received as of now so you can everyone can and the UNF Triple C team and the team of technical experts CG can also estimate that this is the requirement of the country. Yes, the additional benefits are also that you can also improve your domestic policy plan. So the NDC tracking, you are aware that this is a new requirement in the BTR. They, that NDC tracking chapter will tell you that each of your policy, how it is working. Either it is working properly or you need to modify something for your policy. So, the, so it can either it is leading or lagging. You can check that through this chapter. You can improve access to support because you are clearly reporting that this is our support needed and received in this chapter. 
you can also get support from capacity building also political buying in increase also increase the awareness so these are the, the objectives of the transparency arrangement so in specifically for the reporting themes uh, what are the changes in the etf and mrv so you can see the dashed line box the biennial update report and national communication it is the requirement under the existing mrv under the convention so you are already reporting bur and national communication but in the asia i can understand that some countries are not even reporting biennial update report they have only reporting national communication so what is the change in the etf so national communication will remain the same you have to submit every four years the national communication to the unit triple c but now you are submitting bur every two years now you have to submit btr every two years these are the only change and the content of this communication or climate change report that you are submitting to the unit triple c in the bur you can see that national greenhouse gas inventory mitigation and ftc which called finance technology and capacity are the major chapter in the bur but there are some more information that you have to report in the BTR. National Greenhouse Gas Inventory mitigation action will be replaced by the NDC. So the content inside the chapter is not mostly changing, but you have to now track your NDC goals that you have your government has mentioned in the NDC. So you every country can check and you can also check that how we are moving towards achieving our NDC goals. So climate change impact and adaptation, it is a, not a compulsory mandatory requirement, but it is a voluntary. So whatever you want to report in the impact and adaptation IVA chapter, this chapter you are also reporting in the national communication. Now you have to also report in the BTR. FTC chapter is remain the same. And these two requirements, flexibility and the areas of improvement are a new. Until now, in the MRV arrangement, we have don't have any flexibility. We have just like these are the mandatory, these are the non-mandatory. Non-mandatory thing either if you have to, you are encouraged to report. If you are not report, then no one will ask question. But in the flexibility provision in the BTR, there are some reporting requirement which are mandatory, which are non-mandatory. But for the mandatory item, you can take a flexibility. If you do, you are not able to report that particular item, you can use the flexibility. But if you are using flexibility, then you have to also mention that what are that capacity building constraint that you are facing to reporting this. You are not able to report that item. <laughs> and the, this decision, I want to tell you that everyone that 18 CMA 1 and 5 CMA 3. These two decisions are the most important decision and these two decisions cover the everything that clear your mind about the BTR transparency and whatever is the ETF. So if you this is around 35 to 40 pages of the total around maybe 100 pages to documents. So if you read these two decisions, it will clear all your doubts about when you have to report decision. What is the exact content of the greenhouse gas inventory chapter? What is about the NDC tracking? Which are the uh, identity uh, what we say uh, identity uh, parameters that we need for the NDC tracking? So the next slide, I will tell you what is the ETF. Under the Article 13 of the Paris Agreement, so these three are the major reporting. First is the reporting. Second is the technical expert review and third one is the FMCP facilitated multilateral consideration of progress. So those who have not submitted BUR, they are not aware about the ICA process as of now. What happened when we submit the BUR, it goes through a team of technical expert which will now replace by technical expert review in the BTR. And after that, it will go to a FSV, facilitated sharing of view. Now it is replaced by facilitated multilateral consideration of progress. So these are the three requirements. It's a sale requirement for each country. Either you are developed or developing. So most of us are developing country. So for all the parties, now we have to submit the National Greenhouse Gas Inventory and the NDC chapter. These, are, these two chapters are compulsory for all of us. After you submit, you have to go through a technical expert review immediately after through a unit triple C convention where the around six to eight months will take where around 10 experts from the develop and developing country get together and review your BTR and will ask you some question. Then you can ask them some question and 
after the end of this technical expert review, there is a one technical expert review report will be prepared, prepared which will be published on the UNFCCC website. And after that, they, at the final stage, you have to, at the June session or maybe in a COP session, you have to pre, uh, present your BTR in, in, uh, in front of the all developed and developing countries like MA and FSP session. It will be replaced by FMCP. So these are the overview of the ETA particles 13 by the Paris Agreement. Yeah, I think someone has mic open. Is there any question? OK, I will. Con maybe I can take a question at the end of the presentation. So what are the timelines? So we are already in the 2023 and 2024 is approaching. So for the developing country, if you are preparing any BUR 1, 1st, 3rd or 4th, 31st December 2024 is the deadline. You have to submit it before that. And also, similarly, you have a first BTR is in the pipeline. You have to also submit the first BTR before the end of 31st December 2024. So we are requesting every country, those who are available here, if you are preparing BUR, kindly move fast towards submit the BUR and start preparing the BTR. So for developing country, national communication will continue to submit. Every four years you have to submit the national communication, but national communication will not subject to a review. So no one will ask question about what you have included in the chapter, what is your what is your policy and everything. But for the BTR, it will go through a review. You can use the flexibility that is mentioned in the MPG, that flexibility those developing country party that need it in the light of their capacity. Also, you if you are a small island developed country or a least developed country, then you have some flexibility in the timeline also. So you can submit maybe in a 2025 your first BTR, but it is only specific to SI small island development country and least developed countries. But technical expert review and FMCP are uh, compulsory for everyone. So these are the Timeline. So after the 2024, in 2026, you have to submit your second BTR every two years. And every so when the submission date of the national communications and BTR come together, you can submit a one document together. So one document, but the requirement is that you have to cover the all chapter of national communication and BTR in a one report. So this is for only to reduce your burden that you have to not report a two report in one year, so you can report only a one, one report in a particular one year when national communication and BTR comes together. So the, my, this is my final slide. I will not take some time because Dayang will be waiting. So first point is you have to read this to decision 18 CMA 1 and 5 CMA 3. It will clear all your questions and doubts. What is the cell requirement, suit requirement? What is the encouragement? What can be or what may be that you have to report? Second is the CRT and CTF. CRT is common reporting table. CTF is common tabular format. So CRT is for only greenhouse gas inventory. For particular tables that mentioned in the MPG, these two decisions, you have to report specific information. For the CTF is for NDC tracking and the FTC chapter, finance tracking capacity building chapter. So there are around 12 chapter in the NDC tracking and 13 chapter in the FTC chapter. So you have to report these tables specifically that information in this table. Because as of now, we are only reporting two tables uh, according to the 17 CP8. But now the reporting requirement has changed. Third one is the flexibility. You can read to this decision and check that what are the flexibility that you can take. Maybe uh, in light of your capacity, maybe you can improve over the time and the last one is the continuous improvement. So it is not like a, in the first BTR will be should be a complete uh, that there is a no mistake in the first BTR, but BTR cycle is a kind of continuous improvement. You have to improve year by year. You go through a technical expert review process and the team of uh, team of expert will tell you that this is the improvement requirement in your next cycle. So this is the cycle, continuous cycle improve over the time. So do not bother about that. Now we have to report this much information, but 
this is the kind of improvement cycle you can continue to report this kind of information every year by year in each reporting cycle so this is the end of my presentation i will stop sharing so maybe you have some lots of question but due to some time constraint i will request dayang so it uh, so maybe after dayang presentation we will take all the question we have enough time so let me say dayang presentation so she can she can start yes dayang are you able to see my screen Oh, yes, I can J just to check if, if the audio from my side, if it's OK. Yes, I can hear you very well. Thank you. Yeah, the, the screen is showing in, in full. Um, okay. So I shall start my presentation first and foremost. Thank you very much, um, Jipal and also uh, Fatima Zara as well um, for inviting Malaysia to share our a little bit of our knowledge in terms of um, issues and challenges and how we try to overcome these um, with respect to when it comes to our transition to ETF. Um, if we can go to the next slide. And um, also thank you, Jay Paul, for giving that brilliant um, overview um, about VTR and about the review process. And this is um, very much that is uh, something new for developing countries uh, reporting. And, and before I go further on the topic of today, I, I would like to bring to everyone's attention to the, um, this is the 2022 Transparency Needs Assessment. And this was uh, conducted by the uh, uh, UNFCCC Consultative Group of Experts, the CGE. And um, this assessment, um, it draws on the most recent uh, national communications and uh, VURs that have been submitted, um, including technical analysis reports, summary reports of VURs as of June last year. So um, if you can see the breakdown of areas in which challenges and needs were identified, it, it varies. And if you look at issues related to national greenhouse gas inventory, half of them um, or half of the needs uh, they are concentrated in the data and information area, whereas if you look at mitigation or um, um, climate change impacts and adaptation, the the you will see that more than 50% or more than half of the concerns, it's more prominent in the methodology and tools. And um, if we look at the need in support, it is more evenly spread across the different areas. And finally, in the cross-cutting issues, we can see that um, institutional arrangement shows the highest, which is at 61%. So um, the reason why I'm showing this in the introduction part is because we see that um, while countries have their different different areas of needs, but the commonalities is um, very much uh, apparent in, in many, many areas. And um, if, in, uh, if we can go to the next slide. So similarly, in the case of Malaysia, um, um, about two years ago, um, um, sorry, Jepal, um, there's a little bit of um, background noise. Is it coming yeah, from my I side? think so, someone mic has opened. Let okay. me mute. Yeah, now you can go. OK, thank you. So similarly, in the case of Malaysia, uh, Malaysia about two years ago, um, when we started the application process for the GEF enabling um, activity project, and that's for the preparation of BTR, um, as well as for the CIBIT project, we find that there are many loopholes in, in our overall capacity. Um, and then what we did is that we tried to map the um, um, technical and capacity building needs for transparency. And what we have come up with is with five strong recommendations. So looking back into how these recommendations later on, how it is tied to the issues and challenges um, that we are facing, um, I'd like to go to the first one whereby we can see that um, uh, it's it's uh, similar to what the TNA has shown to us. Uh, strengthening the institutional arrangement is one of the key areas that we need to tackle. And, and this is where when you look at the heart of the Paris Agreement, which is uh, parties NDC, 
this NDC now has a huge role in the reporting because there will be a new scope, especially for developing countries, where this is going to be the first time that we will be reporting actions against a certain target. So in national communication preparation or even BUR, um, we only report mitigation actions for certain years and, and that's it. But now it's um, it, it's a different setting where it, it, and, and this is very much new. And when we look at the institutional arrangement that we have, um, one thing that we cannot deny is that the ownership, both at the national and sectoral level, to maintain successive NDCs is very much important. In, in, in other words, um, as you have shown to us, the, the, one of the, the chapter talks about progress of NDC. If there is no action, then there will be no report. Um, that's the basic thing that we, we, we can see. And um, of course, uh, when we look into the actions, um, then only we can deal with the transparency part of it. So first and foremost, there must be um, actions that can be measurable and can be translated into um, um, you know, really robust uh, assessment that we can look at. And then secondly, if we go um, to the second recommendation um, to, to the government um, of Malaysia is regarding specific function and roles uh, relating to transparency, whether there are in the greenhouse gas inventories, in the mitigation action, projections or support. We can see now that if all of these elements or roles can be internalized, um, it will allow a country to perform revisions um, of the existing institutional, economic, um, technological, uh, social changes uh, as part of the decision making process. And this is very, very key to the national focal point of climate change in the country, because if you can allow that process to happen, then we are dealing with ETF in the sense that we're not just talking about reporting, but we are talking about each one of the element has their own roles and again, we need to highlight that, you know, back then probably there is no importance in having specific roles just by looking at uh, quantifying mitigation actions in a way that is um, that, that is uh, complying to the modalities, procedures and guidelines, for instance. So we can see that in developing countries reporting of the BUR, we see that mitigation actions, for instance, we do report them. But in terms of uh, giving it, giving them um, at the level that the ETF is requesting, this is something that we would very much like to see. How do we do the alignments, for instance? So those are specific roles that are not there before. Um, so, so ministries um, or the, the, the custodian of the policies or the mitigation implementers, they need to see not only that, OK, now the country has this um, responsibility to do the reporting, but how do I what do I need to do to help them in terms of reporting? Um, so, so that are the specific functions that, that we see that now um, each one of the ministries we're doing roadshows to ministries um, and also agencies to show that to them that this is very, very important. And then, of course, the third part is um, to have uh, data management system and frameworks, registries, reporting tools. So from our point of view, it, it, it's, it's very much um, useful uh, to invest on these, um, which I will also touch later on by giving some ex um, some examples. And um, just just to get um, the benefits of it, it, it does simplify work, especially when reporting is concerned. Uh, it, it also increases the effectiveness um, in terms of coordination because now you're talking about, I mean, we are always talking about um, reporting at the national level, but now it's there are certain specificity that is much more complex. Um, so so, so that, that can help as well. And of course, we have learned the hard way uh, during COVID um, time when um, it's, it's, there is no, um, physical meetings and whatnot. You can't run meetings, you can't run workshops. So, so we see that, of course, it is so much worth to invest on, on, on building these and it, it ensures the sustainability and the continuity of the ETF activities as well. And then the fourth point will be on policy consideration. So 
of course, again, going back to reporting, because now the, the, the ETF um, um, or the BTR itself, it's a different set of, of report that we now need to, to, to be very, very transparent in our actions in meeting the, the Paris Agreement goals. So we need to look into sectoral transformation as well. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, if, if let's say for Malaysia's case, we're talking about economy-wide emissions, meaning we are talking about all of the sectors, all of the reporting sectors. So if we don't go to transferal, uh, uh, sectoral transformation, then again, um, what we will end up with is having um, a process of reporting um, that is just, um, I would say, just it's, it's a one way communication. You know, it doesn't it doesn't the reporting process doesn't click with the policymakers. It doesn't click with um, the the effort to mainstream these activities at the national and state level, uh, in fact. So, so we believe that this is something that is very important because now we are talking at the um, area of NDC. Um, and then, of course, the, the fifth one, which is very important um, in, in all of the countries, uh, communication, education, promotion and awareness. As, as much as simple as it sounds, um, to go at the national level, it needs a lot of resources, a lot of time, a lot of, um, it, it needs to be strategized in a way that we can connect to, to the stakeholders, whether they're at the, uh, in, in, in whichever levels they are. So, so this is something that we are also looking at. Um, and in fact, when, when we look at uh, um, um, awareness, um, it's, it's not just dealing with um, the, the ministry's level or ministerial level or, or the politicians, or, but it goes back to even to the grassroots. So, so this is, again, very, very, we find it very challenging. And if we can go to the next slide, this is just um, to show the current institutional arrangement that we have. So we have at the up um, of the pyramid there, uh, Malaysian Climate Change Action Council. So this is the apex in decision making in terms of uh, climate change issues and, 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 and policies. And this is chaired by the Prime Minister. And then we have the National Steering Committee on Climate Change. We also have the Technical Committee on Climate Change. And this Technical Committee um, looks not, uh, th this committee not only looks at the policy and implementation, but also on the national reporting itself. So it, it goes both ways. And then there is this uh, new establishment of Malaysia Greenhouse Gas Center, my GHG. Um, this was approved by the cabinet in February last year. Um, and, and due to some structural changes in the ministry, we are still um, dealing with the recruitment process in terms of uh, finalizing how, how to get this um, uh, to be formalized. And then, of course, the technical working groups. And these are, um, in, 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 I think this is just similar to, to, to to other developing countries where we have those thematic areas, the technical working group, um, which is also the engine um, to the whole reporting process. And, and that without these elements, it's going to be very hard to look at um, um, the reporting elements in, in a most structural way. And again, supporting the technical working group, we have the sub working groups. So this is very much similar, I, I would say, um, in, in, in many, many countries. Um, the only thing that we have brought in, the new elements, is that we have introduced another technical working group, which is, um, we call it the TWG uh, transparency related activities. So this deals with all of the new elements. So, so things like projections, for instance, um, um, and how to deal with um, uncertainty in, in the reporting, for instance. So, so we have established this um, as the most uh, newest um, TWG uh, under the technical committee. Um, if we can go to the next slide. Um, uh, yeah, yes. So um, just to bring back to, to the key points um, in the BTR, 
to facilitate transparency, as mentioned um, by Jay Paul just now in, in his last slide. Um, we need to, when it comes to the preparation of the BTR, we need to carefully understand the decisions of 18 CMA1 and 5 CMA3, again, along with the CRTs and the CTFs. Um, and it's best to familiarize with these um, if countries were to to, to to try or to, to prepare their that BTR. I was informed that several countries have tried um, to, to replicate uh, uh, the BTR um, um, report using these CTFs, which is really, really great. And um, for Malaysia, we haven't done yet. So what we have so far is we have um, we have talked about this under different different groups. Um, for example, we had a discussion with um, a workshop with the EU ASEAN China, just looking at each one of the CTF, um, table one, table two, table three, for instance, just to look at it and to understand how this is being, uh, how we can fulfill all of these criteria. And through our exercise, we find that even some of the definition that we have translating these decisions were, were not uh, correct. So we had different different views and um, it, it, it helps us in terms of understanding how to, to comply uh, with the MPGs, um, especially with regards to the CTF. Of course, the CRT is another, another complexity that we need to look at. There are some of the, um, when you look at the CRT, some of the elements are very much new. Uh, and and um, we, what we're trying to do is to build that capacity building within our compilers and to get them to get uh, them to look at those um, uh, format and to see that, OK, this is what we're going to do next. So so to build that that capacity building is something that is not easy, but it, it is a continuous process. Um, next slide, please. So this is one example that I would like to bring in, because when you talk about issues and challenges of the ETF, it also comes with opportunities. So this is where when we look at one of the chapter, which is the the, the tracking progress uh, of the NDC, um, which uh, Jaypal has also shown um, in the earlier slide. So when you talk about this, this, uh, this chapter, we are talking, we are providing information, for instance, necessary to track progress made in implementing and achieving the NDC. And this needs to be closely looked with the CTFs because we will be providing both information, uh, if not in, in the narrative and in the tabular format. Uh, and Malaysia loves to, to report in tabular format because it gives you the uh, flexibility that you won't miss things when you have 10 things to report and you have to put it in a narrative form. It's, it's very, very much uh, lengthy and uh, not easy. And um, again, English is not our mother tongue. So to have this, this um, to be reported in such a robust way, it's um, there's a lot of uh, issues issues there. So we would we, we love to have uh, reports in tabular form. And then um, there is also this thing uh, which is reporting greenhouse gas emissions and removals. And um, with this on, on, on this part, although countries can use their flexibility um, not to report this at this moment, looking at different starting points, um, what we can see is that for countries who would like to report these, there are certain things that um, we should take into consideration, which is at uh, the next slide. So things that we need to look at when, when we do projections, because again, this is a new playing field for us um, where we need to, to report um, actions against a target. And this, this includes long-term uh, time or long-term uh, target or timeline. So things that we would like to consider is this, if um, the NDC involves economy-wide emissions like Malaysia, so we would be looking into all of the sectors and we have to take into consideration um, whether what type of activities that we want within the sector, although in, in a domestic setting, we can, um, we can provide a very exhaustive list on, on what are the mitigation actions that we would like to take. But it is one from, from one of the lessons that we have learned um, in, 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 in our journey is this, it's probably also best to look into mitigation actions that bring, 
that brings the most benefit in terms of emission reduction. Um, you know, so not to say that mitigation actions which reduces emission the lowest is not important. That's not the main thing, but in terms of the robustness of the reporting, because now the the everything needs to be transparent in terms of the methodologies, the calculation. You have to make sure that there's um, coherence uh, and, and consistency with the the inventory chapter as well, and and also um, other than than that, you have to look into the small small detail, which you know before this we 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 it's not mandatory for us to look at so so those elements are now there and then we have to also consider when we look into activities that we are going to report the the by gases as well so so it's no longer you know it gets much more complex and then we have to of course to build or if the domestic mrv framework is not there for new actions, then we have to build that. Or if there's already existing MRB, um, we need to strengthen them. So, so those are the things as well. Uh, the methodologies, uh, I have touched on them, the consistency part with the inventory. And then there's this one whole new topic about carbon market reporting, which uh, we need to report, free report um, in a year. Um, and there should be some um, starting point to do that. And again, the element of projections. Um, next slide, please. So, so this is um, to show. So, if we look at the um, the handbook that was provided to us by the UNFCCC, so if 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 we are providing information with regards to projection, for instance, when we look at the case of Malaysia, at least we know now. Okay, when we do the projection, this is the what will be the projection data starting year. Uh, what will be the endpoint? So it gives us the guidance on 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 the timeline uh, of the projection. But just one one point that I would like to mention here is that projection is not just a tool that we can use for reporting. It has many functions and roles. And um, the most important thing that it can do is that it can be a, a very powerful tool to inform uh, insights and to aid policy making. Um, one example is that if we have an assessment where it, it, it has a least cost approach uh, in it, optimization function, for instance, it, it will tell us um, insights on least cost approach to decarbonization. So when we're talking about transformational changes uh, in, in, in the context of NDC, we are talking about maximizing uh, national benefits, how to manage costs to the people, the private sector government, and this can be an iterative uh, approach to long term planning. So this is where why we see that, OK, while we have this element of projection in ETF, it can also be something that is more and it, we can use it and, and, and do it and deal with it and um, to update NDCs. So every five years. So so it's, it's worth uh, to invest developing this within the national focal point um, that that's we, we strongly believe in that. And then it goes to my final um, slide. So um, in the next slide, so just um, uh, in a nutshell, when, when, when you look into the issues and key challenges and, and the more Im important question is how to overcome these, um, the first thing is that we need to admit and we have to agree that everyone needs to sit down and agree that now there's cross sections between the policy the, the theme or area of reporting, and there needs to be specific roles um, to implement the ETF. And, and by having um, and, and having said that, it, it has to be um, a top down um, because um, approach as well, because there's a lot of um, transformation that needs to be done within the ministry, within within the ministries, the agencies. Um, so it's 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 not just a bottom up approach, but it has to be top down as well. And uh, my last note will be this. Um, yes, while we as developing countries, this is going to be our first time to prepare the BTR, um, but the expectation of having it, um, especially for the first probably five reports, it, it won't be a perfect BTR, but but we will build that capacity and uh, improvement. Um, plan should should be there. Um, th that's all um, from my presentation.
thank you very much. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much, Diane. It is a really a comprehensive presentation that you have covered almost everything how Malaysia is moving towards from the MRV to ETF and you have already done some kind of capacity needs assessment that this may be a, some challenges for the Malaysia and how it is a possible some steps or uh, solution that you can handle and tackle the challenges that you will face in the future. So yeah, this is the uh, I want to tell that all the developing countries in the so yeah, I think institutional arrangement after the seeing the Dayang presentation, you can see that institutional arrangement is the most important part when you moving towards from the domestic MRV arrangement to the ETF arrangement. Because if your domestic MRV arrangement are not robust or enough to handle this current BUR or national communication, then you need to strengthen this system institutional arrangement system. One of the topic also that the young mentioned that they are in Malaysia. They are doing some kind of webinars or kind of a. Uh, what we say that. Uh, uh, information awareness about the other ministry that these are the new requirement for the climate change ministry or environment ministry to report to the UNFCCC. So maybe they need support from the all the ministries or stakeholder to uh, compile and prepare the first BTR that this is the information that we need. So yes, you can at least in your country, the environment ministry or climate change ministry can plan do a kind of webinar to explain these two decisions to the all the stakeholders who are involved, who are data provider or doing a data analysis or either a quality uh, QAQC stakeholder that doing for you from the years. So, so now we are open for a question and answer session. So, if you are not asking any question, then maybe you can give us a suggestion. Yes. So, first question is from Methamli. I think she is from uh, yes Sri Lanka. So, what is the base year for the national inventory report of the first BTR for developing country? Is it common for all developing countries 2022 or 2021? So yes, so the as per the 18 CMA MPG guideline, uh, not more than two years is the mention the word that have mentioned in the MPGs. So when you are submitting a 2024 first BTR, then your greenhouse gas inventory should be at 2022, not more than two. So at least 2022 inventory is needed when you submitting the first BTR. So it's a two year cycle. So in 2026, you have to report the 2024 data, but developed country has to report the every year, but developing country have we have some flexibility. We can report every two years. Um, just to add on that, there is also flexibility. Um, so, so the one that is 2022 is X minus two. There is yeah. also a flexibility provision, if I'm not mistaken, for X minus three. three. So it's also possible to use the, the flexibility. Yeah. Yes. So if you are not able to submit the inventory two years then you have to you can say that and you have to mention some paragraphs or lines about that why are you not reporting and you are using a flexibility and you have to mention some capacity building constraint that you are facing in your country if you are not missing these reasons then when you go to a technical expert review the people of the technical expert review will ask you some questions specifically to this only so you receive a 10 question on that why are you not reporting this? This is a mandatory requirement. So it is a recommended. At least you should mention that. Yeah, this is the capacity building and we will try to improve over the years because every country has a different national circumstances and I can understand some countries are not even submitting even first BUR. So now they are directly moving towards the first BTR. So I can understand. And from the CBIT GSP, I, I am assuring that we are available for any kind of support. This is like one kind of webinar to the understand the ETF. In the next week, I want to tell you that we are also trying to plan with Singapore government, which is already advanced country in the our Asia region. So I am requesting them to and the national focal point of the they are also a CG member, consolidated group of expert from the UNFCCC. 
those CG member are also providing support to the all developing countries. Yes, so Mahmadis wants to ask about the flexibility. Yes, so MPG guidelines have a flexibility for each pair, para by para. So maybe if you want your country want to understand, maybe we can arrange one session around one hour to informal session, not want to do some presentation, but just want to understand what is the exact paragraph want to say to the country and how country need to be report. So yes, we can do that. If you can, you are interested, you can send us a request for to understand like for the Caribbean region and the uh, Anglo, uh, another our coordinator, they are also doing kind of informal webinar. So they does they don't do any kind of presentation or just do that. They just discuss the all this MPG guideline para by para. What is the meaning of para and how they because some countries are not English is the not main language, so they can understand. Yeah, this is the requirement. So we can also do that. I am available for any kind of support. You can just send me an email. So any other question? So there are around 34 people. Yes, it's a good audience. Yes, kindly just repeat your points said in presentation about uh, about which point? Flexibility. Okay. So yes. Uh, let me stop sharing. So in the decision of 18 CMA1, there are the requirement of different. Uh, let me share it here so you can easily understand. So it, it is also the everyone want to uh, understand. So this is the decision of 18 CMA1. You can see here. So this is when it is go to by guiding principle to para by para. Yeah, this is the reporting guidelines. Let me zoom it. So you can see it here. Each party shall report the information refer in the paragraph. Associate flexibility provided for those developing country party that need them in the light of their capacity. So, so now we have a reporting requirement for each. Like this is the cross cutting element. So if there is a some, let me pick someone. So yes, here each party shall report the individual cumulative percentage contribution from key category for both level and trend consistent with the IPCC guideline referred to in paragraph 20 means 2006 guideline and provision refer. So if you are not for like a 20 category, you are using 2006 guideline, but for only one category, you are not able to use 2006 guideline and you are using a 1996 guideline. So this is the flexibility that you have taken for the particular one category. So you have to mention that this is the data or maybe some challenge. That's why we are not able to take 2006 guideline and we are using 1996. So this can be taken as a flexibility for you all. So every reporting requirement, you can just see the guidelines and see that what is the flexibility that are available for you. Yes, so from Santa to my knowledge in the BTR, there is a there is an additional guest NF3 in NIR. Is it true or not? Yes. So as of now, we are reporting a six guesses, but now we have to in the BTR, we have to report a seven guesses. So the seven number guesses is NF3. Uh, it, is it needed to quantify GHG emission reduction under the NDC tracking? Yes, so the earlier now we are reporting the each policy, how the policy reduced the terms of uh, greenhouse gas emission. So it is continued to reporting. NDC tracking is what the chapter name NDC tracking that you have to track your each goal that you have mentioned in NDC. But if you see the guidelines after the NDC tracking, there is also the mitigation policy section in that chapter also. So in that chapter, you have to report that you have a national solar policy. So you have to mention that uh, around 100 gigawatt of the solar or 100 megawatt of solar you have installed in a one year. So you can say that around 25 or 30 million ton of emission you have saved by installing this much of amount of the solar. So yes, you have to also report and there is also the 
what I mentioned in the CTF table. So you have to report this information in the CTF table, common tabular format. It is also tables. This all these tables by lines and row column are provided in the guidelines. Yes, expecting more question. This is the topic like it is never ending, so I can understand. Yes, Tahiri, is there any guidance for NDC tracking? Uh, not by the UNF triple C, but they have mentioned that this is the how you can identify the parameters that you can track, how you have to report these tables in the CTF tables. There, this is the 12 or 13 table with NX that this is information required, how you project, but not a methodological or technical guidelines are available, but there are some agencies like FAO or PATPA, they have developed some tool. UNFCCC are also developing some tool that, that will help you to how to identify and once you input some data, it is automatically identi uh, tell you that how this your policy is growing and it create a chart that from 2020 to 2030, your policy is going this towards. As of now, I think not much resources available, but it will be improved by I think in 2020 before end of 2024, you will see so many guidance document or same maybe. Yeah. Yes, Santa is asking that regarding area of improvement, does it apply for individual chapter reporting process or what does mean this? So improvement is uh, if you have like if you are not able to uh, fulfill the mandatory requirement, so you need the improvement. So uh, for the improvement, there when there is a technical expert review team, you review your BTR. They will they are not automatically review your and not tell you that this is the improvement. But if you are requesting them that kindly review our BTR in detail and tell us. What are the improvement or what are the things that we have missed? What are the mandatory things that we have not fulfilled? So they will tell you that this is the requirement improvement that you have fulfilled in, in your next reporting. So second BTR and third BTR you have to continually improving. So this is the improvement section that all uh, new thing that included in the BTR. Yes, any more question? You can also unmute your mic and ask any type of question. Dayang has a lots of experience in the greenhouse gas inventory and he sees handling from so many years. And Malaysia has already developed three national communication and four BURs. So you can ask any kind of question, not me, but at least uh, don't underestimate her. <laughs> I know I know her and I have seen him to present in the UNEP Triple C and all other platform. So you if you have any question, just ask. This is the opportunity for you. I think when it comes to the ETF, Jay Paul, it's 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 quite overwhelming to everyone. Yeah. Yeah, so it's so a it's, kind of lots of information together. They are not yes. even no one can understand easily. That yes. need I think three, four, five sections of seminars yes. on particular each paragraph and each section. Yes, we we we, we struggle a lot with 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 uh, looking into how to 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 have the preparation, the transition to ETF. So. I can imagine with our other colleagues, it's, it's not something that is uh, it's not a walk in the park uh, kind of a yeah. thing. Yeah. So again, so end of the seminar, I will ask about some feedback. So if you can open your Mentimeter again. I will paste the link in the chat box so you can just directly click the link. I will also share the Mentimeter screen here. Yes. So the next question is, what other areas would you like to see in the next experience setting webinars? So we are doing this kind of informal exchange or virtual seminars that will be useful for you to understand. So if there is any something topic that in your mind that you want 
the seminar specifically on this topic. So please answer. Yes, we have already one answer. Yes, NDC tracking, expecting MPGs and CTF. Yes. NDC tracking again. Yes. Yeah, MPGs are understand that most of you are not aware to understand, not able to understand how, what is the, because it is a common language of UNFCCC that it was decided by this decision, 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 and this is the requirement. So, yeah, we can do that maybe on the uh, decode the MPG guidelines, maybe a kind of one seminar. Yes, greenhouse gas inventory in terms of BTR, we can do that. Yes, projection calculation modeling. Yes, projection required in the NDC, maybe a, because there is a leap or GASMO tool are available. We can do kind of webinar on that. Greenhouse gas inventory, carbon market reporting. Yes. Okay, let me move to a next question. So how useful did you find this webinar? So this is a totally confidential. I didn't know who is responding. So you can directly say whatever is your, whatever you feel. It is a kind of feedback to us so we can improve over the webinars, webinars like improvement in the BTR. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. So 12 people found it very useful. Thanks to Diane, this 13 people. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. And the last question, what aspect of the webinar would you improve in the next time? So we can also improve ourselves like is there anything content that specifically like you want graph or some more interaction or more kind of exercise or some practical exercise? Yes, and we start to get answer. No, we are already complete, so we don't need to improve. <laughs> yes, more country to present. Yes, we can do that. Maybe at around half an hour for each country, maybe a two hour session. Interactive session, yes, wearing presentation with deeper discussion, yes, practical exercise, yes, because it's actually the time is the limited, otherwise, we can include a two country in a one webinar, but we will, of course, tie up in the next time. Showing the practical of NDC tracking and inventory, of, yeah, maybe we can do some practical exercise on that, or maybe some example that how that some can from the country example that this country has done this how NDC tracking. Yes, exercise, exercise and exercise. Yes. Yeah, and if, can, if any one of your country want to present something about your country experience, we are happy to accommodate you anytime, any day. Just you have to mail, send me one email. Okay, so I am ending this Mentimeter exercise. Thank you so much for joining us today. And uh, I also want to know that this all the webinars, my presentations that will be available on the CBIT GSP platform. I will share the, I will send the link to all of you, those who are already present and not present. Let me stop sharing here. And is there anything question? Any I am available. You can also email me or if you want any time, just send me an email or message anything. And the I will I will also send you the webinar invitation for the next Singapore. So Singapore is a quite advanced in the climate reporting. They have submitted five national communication and five URs, and they are already preparing the BTRs. So in the next webinar, when I will send you, I will request you to present there, and the all of your question will be auto. Uh, in a one minute, you are get your response within the from the CG member. So that Singapore has a lots of experience in the Asia region. So and 
they are doing without support from any jap or any agency this is the one of the important point that i want to tell you so i request you to everyone to present when i will send you the webinar invitation for next webinar in the next week okay i think there is a no question and if you have any question you can send me an email in to me or dayang also thank you dayang for taking time i know you are very busy in your cbit and vtr and everything but thank you so much you are taking the time and thank you all the participants you have taking a time for present uh, attending this event thank you very much thank you thank you everyone i am thank you so much thank, thank you, you. So much. Thank you, bye bye. Thank you, Ravni. Thank you for supporting. Thank you, Brunei. Also, I can see there are three, four, five people from the Brunei. Brunei.